In part three of this series, we discuss how God leads us through dreams, visions, prophecies, and angelic visitations. We need to be open to these and learn how to correctly test and receive what God would be saying to us through these means of divine guidance. So let's stand up to our feet, please. We're going to make our declaration together, and then we'll spend some time in God's Word. So if you brought your Bible, hold it high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold, and strong. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is my master. And to Him, I am an absolute surrender. I advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been uh, talking about receiving God's guidance. Uh, We started this two Sundays ago. Uh, This is our third Sunday in this series. Uh, Next Sunday is our youth camp. So a lot of the young people will be away. Uh, So we'll take a break in this series. Uh, It'll be a different, it'll be just a single message next Sunday. And then we'll pick this up again the following Sunday uh, in June and continue. So our associate pastors will be continuing the series on receiving God's guidance and just uh, bring that to completion. Uh, We've, uh, uh, just to, you know, this, this whole aspect of God guiding us in everyday life is so important. We all, all of us have so many decisions to make right, in life. And uh, we, need, we want to hear from God. We want to make sure that the decisions that we are making are pleasing to God, that they are aligned to God's will and plan and purpose for our lives. And so for all of us, receiving God's guidance is very important. And we outlined 11 different ways by which God brings his guidance to us. And uh, we just, you know, are trying to explain each of these 11 ways. So we talked about the word, um, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, which we didn't cover last Sunday, but we did make mention of it. Uh, We talk about dreams and visions, prophecies, angels, godly counsel, the renewed mind, times and seasons, circumstances, and divine orchestration. So God brings his guidance to our lives through uh, all of these ways. And we must understand uh, how to receive that guidance, how to determine, understand God's guidance in our lives as he speaks to us through one or more of these ways. Now, uh, it does not mean that in every decision you've got to check all, na- all, all of these 11. You ask somebody, what are you doing? I'm waiting for the ninth one. You know? no, that's not the point. The point is, these are many, these are of many ways through which God can speak to us. Um, uh, we are looking for at least two or three confirmations, two or three ways, right? We said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. So if God is speaking to you two or three ways, uh, that confirms then you go forward uh, in what, uh, in the decision you're making. But we need to be open to uh, any of these 11 different ways through which God brings his guidance into our lives. We covered, um, we say also said that the word and the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, these are two primary ways. The word and the Holy Spirit, primary ways. Everything else are secondary ways. So the primary ways are crucial. God got, uh, speak, must speak to you through those two ways. It's very important. The others, okay, secondary, 
you know, uh, the ways through which God will speak to us. I want to quickly review some of the things we said. We talked about how God speaks to us through the written scriptures. Uh, we talked about the instructions in God's word, the quickened word, the word preached, and the voice of our conscience. We talked about last Sunday about how God guides us by his Holy Spirit. We talked about the inner witness of the Spirit, the voice of the Spirit, and we, uh, we, we just made mention of the gifts of the Spirit. In talking about the inner witness of the Holy Spirit last Sunday, we explained how the inner witness comes. Uh, and we are mentioned these eight different ways about the quickening of Scripture, the assurance within, the desire, the knowing, the prompting, the stirring, and the foreknowledge and the warning inside of us. So these are different ways that the inner witness of the Spirit is given to us. Are you all with me so far? Yep. Uh, we, we did this last Sunday, and we talked about the voice of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, the inner voice of, of the Spirit. Now, if you missed these two messages, they're available online. You can go and listen to them uh, and just become familiar uh, with this teaching. So I want to pick up from there. I want to just mention a little bit about the collective witness to the Holy Spirit's leading, and then talk about, uh, today we'll talk about dreams and visions, prophecies, and angels. So we'll cover that this morning, right? But before we get into dreams and visions, I want to just talk about a little bit about the collective witness of, uh, to the Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, we find this especially in the book of Acts uh, and how the church makes decisions. Uh, there is the collective witness of the Holy Spirit. And I'll just reference a few examples there. In Acts the 13th chapter, in the church in Antioch, you find, you know, there were these leaders, uh, uh, Barnabas is one of them, Saul is one of them, who later became Paul, uh, and a couple of other leaders, there are five of them, they're leading the church in Antioch, and uh, there was a time when they're all praying together, worshiping God, and the Bible says, the Holy Spirit said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work I've called them. So the Holy Spirit saying, hey, I want two of your leaders, I want you to send them out for the work, I have a call for, I have a work for them outside this church. And then it says they prayed, they fasted, they prayed, they blessed, and they sent them out. Now, it, what I want to point out is, it does not tell us how the Holy Spirit spoke. It simply says the Holy Spirit said. It could have come through prophecy, it could have come through a vision, it could have come through uh, an inner witness or inner voice. We don't know exactly how, but the Holy Spirit said. But the point is, all five were in agreement with this. That's what I want to highlight. Right? The five leaders were in agreement. Yes, the Holy Spirit is telling us we need to release Barnabas and Saul for them to go out into the work that he has for them outside. So they, they released them and then that's how the apostolic ministry of Barnabas, Saul and Bar, Paul and Barnabas began. It was a collective witness to what the Holy Spirit was speaking. Another instance is in the 15th chapter of Acts. The church was in a little bit of turmoil at that time because a lot of Gentiles were believing in Jesus Christ and they didn't know how to handle it. Uh, should they compel the Gentiles who became believers in Jesus Christ to also follow the customs of Judaism? That was a big question. And so you find in Acts 15, they had the first council meeting. All the apostles, there were other elders, and Barnabas and Paul came over from Antioch. They all sat down together and they were discussing this. Now in the discussion, there is no mention that there was the Holy Spirit speaking. But at the end of that discussion, here's how James summarizes in Acts 15, and I mentioned verse 28. James stands up and says, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us that we do not put any burden on the Gentiles. So you look at that collective decision. They had a discussion, but when they arrived at the decision, they were saying, it is good to the Holy Spirit and to us. So there's a collective witness to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And the church was moved in that direction. To welcome Gentiles without putting any other burden on them. Are not uh, compelling the Gentiles to follow the customs of Judaism. That's a very interesting thing. In Acts 16, another reference I put up there. In Acts 16, 6 to 10. Again, you see how Paul's uh, apostolic team. Uh, probably about uh, five or more people at that time. There was Paul, there was Luke, uh, Timothy and others were part of that team. As they were traveling, it says they wanted to go into one place. The Holy Spirit said no. Then they wanted to go to another place. And the Holy Spirit said no. Then Paul had a vision. Come over to Macedonia and help us. And then the whole team said, okay, we are going to go to Macedonia. Again, it doesn't tell us there how the Holy Spirit said, don't go. They could have had a dream. Somebody could have had a dream. There could have been a prophecy, uh, something. But the point is, the whole team to, was together on that decision. The Holy Spirit is telling us 
not to go there, not to go there, but to go there. So they collective, they had a collective witness and they began to move. And that's how they went about planting churches. So I want to highlight that, that even us, uh, you know, whether it's us as a church, whether it's a small team that's going out there to minister, whatever, let's be open to this collective witness of the Holy Spirit. Right? It's not enough that God speaks to one person. Like, so we have our pastoral meeting and a lot of ideas, things we put out there. You know, in our pastoral meeting. So we share, we talk, we discuss. And then if we are in agreement and we have, uh, you know, all of us are peaceful about it, we move in that direction. Otherwise, okay, we put it on hold, right? Because there is that collective witness that is important, that, that the Holy Spirit is speaking and us as leaders are in agreement to what we, each of us are sensing that the Holy Spirit is telling us. We begin to do, we do things like that. So that's important, especially when you're leading a group or a team to have the collective witness of the Holy Spirit. So now this morning, let's move forward to these other areas of dreams and visions, prophecies and angels. These are other ways that God will guide us. Now, unlike last Sunday, uh, this, mo this morning, I'm going to hold back on too many personal stories. Okay? <laughs> we don't have time for it. Uh, but I want to assure you that uh, over the years, uh, uh, that the things where I'm speaking to you are not just theory, right? That these are genuine ways. Uh, when I look back, back you know, as far as 1989 was, I think it was the first time somebody prophesied over my life. And it was very powerful. And over the years, I've been recording prophecies, recording dreams. And there have been many dreams, uh, even concerning church. I would have a dream for certain people. Then I would wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to need to cover them in prayer. And I may not, I, call, I normally don't call and tell them I had a dream for you, this, this, this. That's not the point. The purpose of the dream is to cover that family or that cover that household in prayer. Right? So I've had those dreams. There have been dreams I've had about the church. Things before it would happen. I would dream. I'd write it down. And then when it happens, I will say, wow, exactly what I saw in the dream. It's happening here. So I know how to handle this situation. So there have been so many examples. And, and one thing I encourage all of us to do is to journal your dreams. Write it down. Because sometimes a dream can be well ahead of time. Right? It may not happen next week. It may happen, it may be five years ahead of time, but you journal it down. Because then when it begins to unfold, you can go back and read it and not try to depend on your memory. As, oh, what did God actually tell me there? You know? So always journal your dreams, okay? So I'm not going to go into too many personal examples, but I want to, in a very, very concise way, talk about these things. Dreams, visions, prophecies, and so on. Maybe one or two uh, personal stories will come along the way. In Acts chapter 2, Verses 17 and 18, um, uh, Peter says, you know, we are in those last days where God is pouring out His Spirit on every one. And what, what highlights this outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Your young men will see visions, your old men will dream, dreams, and people will prophesy. So dreams, visions, and prophecy. They are a hallmark of this move of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And it's available for all of us. Now you don't have permission to dream right now. So <laughs> you need to be awake. Listen. Okay. Uh, but it's a hallmark of this move of the Holy Spirit. The move of God's Spirit in the last days will give people, God's people, dreams, visions, prophecy. So we need to be open to these areas. So let's talk about each of these in a very concise manner. So dreams, now of course dreams can have different sources, right? Uh, sometimes dreams happen because you had too much biryani. <laughs> it's just too much, man, you had some nightmare, some bad dream. Those dreams you just discard, don't worry about, just reject. Sometimes of course dreams could be demonic interception, disturbances in our night. Time. And those things you've got to get up, you reject it, you don't believe it, don't, don't let it affect you, don't let it cause fear in your heart. But there are dreams that are actually God speaking to you. And those are the dreams you need to pay attention to. Right? Uh, just a few scriptures. Psalm 16 verse 7, the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. That means in the night my heart, God is speaking to me through my inner person. And he's giving me instruction in the night. Jesus. God is instructing. 
Job put it like this. The book of Job has this. Job 33, 14 to 18. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering, slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. In order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man, he keeps he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the soul. So God speaks in a dream to instruct us and to keep us from getting into wrong things. He correct us. Right? And notice he says dream, visions of the night. So what are dreams? There are things you see at night. You're asleep, but you're seeing. You may see a picture, you may see a motion film, you see things happening, all of that. That is God speaking in a dream. He says, God speaks to us in dreams. So we must be open to this whole area of God speaking to us, giving us a direction, speaking to us through dreams. Now, uh, there are, uh, you know, in the Bible, you find many different uh, reasons why God uses dreams to speak to us. And I will just list it like this. Number one, he speaks to us through dreams sometimes to meet us and encounter us. So Jacob had an encounter with God. God met him in the dream. Hello, Jacob. I'm with you. you know? Sometimes God encounters us. He just gives us dreams. We wake up and just know that God is real. He is spoken. And the presence of God overwhelms us. So he encounters us in dreams. Uh, he secondly encourages us. Uh, in, in Acts 16, Paul uh, was at Corinth, and Acts 18, sorry, and uh, he was persecuted. There's a lot of trouble. And he, then Jesus appears to him that night in a dream and says, Paul, don't be afraid. I am with you. Right? So he's encouraging Paul through a dream. So dreams encourage us. God encourages us through dreams. He instructs and teaches us on what we should do, choices we need to, need to make. For example, think of Joseph. You know, uh, Mary and Joseph, when Joseph received news that Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit, it was a very embarrassing situation. And maybe and Joseph was inclined to put her away. But God speaks to him in a dream and says, Joseph, take Mary. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your way. He instructs him, teaches him, guides him in, in what to do. So God will direct and guide us in dreams. Again, going back to Mary and Joseph's illustration. Example there, uh, an angel of, the God, angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, take Mary and Jesus, go away to Egypt for a time. So protect the baby. And then after some time, he said, now you can go back into Judea. Go back in a dream. Right? So God was guiding them, directing them through dreams and he would do that for us today as well uh, we see number five God reveals future events uh, he reveals secret things to us uh, he corrects realigns us he also alerts and warns us so sometimes a dream comes it doesn't mean God is saying that will happen but he's alerting you so that you can prevent it from happening through prayer are you with me so pay attention to those dreams when you wake up and you feel the presence of God. It's not a nightmare. You know it's not your activity. You know, some of us are very busy. And so sometimes you keep thinking about that at night. So you know it's not that. It's no, you know it's not a nightmare. You know it's not a demonic interception. But you're waking up. You feel the presence of God. And then pay attention to that dream. God will, is speaking to you through that dream. It could be he's doing one of these things for you. Right? I'd encourage all of us to journal our dreams. That means write it down. Uh, I've been doing that for many years. So I can go back. I can look at the dreams I've had over time. And what God has spoken uh, over the years through those dreams. I want to encourage you to do that as well. Um, uh, of course, uh, some dreams are simple. Uh, you can understand the meaning of those dreams. But some dreams are figurative. That means you, uh, uh, th th they are symbolic in nature. So you need to understand the meaning of those dreams. So that's why you pray and say, God, what are you telling me? Uh, and you interpret the, the symbolism that you find in those dreams. Uh, if you can't do it yourself, then you get somebody to help you uh, who knows how to interpret dreams. And you try to get the meaning. But dreams are important. We need to be open to that. Let's talk about visions. Like we saw, visions also are something the Holy Spirit is doing in our time. Visions, the only difference between dreams and visions are the state in which you are. In a dream, you're asleep. In a vision, you're awake. But you're seeing something God is showing. That's the only difference. So in a dream, you're asleep and you're seeing something. 
In a vision, you're awake, but you're seeing something. Right? So God intercepts your imagination. He puts things, it could be a single picture, or it could be a sequence of things happening. He intercepts what you are seeing with visuals that he is giving you. That is a vision. Are you understand? So some of us have actually been having visions, and you're like, hmm, where did that come from? Maybe, I don't know, and you just go on. And you don't pay attention to it. But actually that visual that intercepted your normal imagination, that came on the canvas of your mind, was God giving you a vision, a visual, trying to convey something to you. You've got to pay attention to that. So we see visions happening. And just for us to understand, we see different kinds of visions. And I'll just explain that for us. Uh, God uses these visions to guide us, direct us. Number one, there is what we call as a spiritual vision. This is the most common. This is what all of us as believers uh, have happening for us. That means just like how in a dream you're seeing something happen. In a vision, you're awake and God suddenly puts a picture across your mind. Or a sequence of events. Or you're praying about something and something flashes in your mind. Through your mind, you're seeing these things. Right? That is a spiritual vision. Meaning you're awake. And it's not happening in, you, in front of you, but it's happening on your, uh, you can see it projected on your imagination. It's coming out of your spirit and you're seeing it on your imagination. Your imagination is like the screen on which God is projecting these visuals. Are you with me? And this is a spiritual vision. You're awake, you're seeing it. But God is communicating something to you through that vision. Just a spiritual vision. Then there is what we call, what the Bible calls a trance. In a trance, the difference is that you're physically, you're not conscious of your physical circumstances, things around you. So uh, you suddenly disconnect from your surroundings and you're seeing a vision. You're so caught up in that vision, you're disconnected from your immediate things. And it's a temporary thing. But that's a trance. You're seeing a vision and you're disconnected from your, in, your being conscious of your immediate surroundings. For example, Peter had a trance. He saw a vision when in a trance. He saw this uh, big sheet coming down from heaven and all these creatures on it and God saying, arise and eat. Right? So that was a trance. And then he saw a vision in a trance. There's the, an open vision, which means now you are seeing clearly in the spiritual realm. Your eyes are open to see into the spiritual realm. So it is not a picture coming on the, on the canvas of your imagination, but now you're actually seeing into the realm of the Spirit. So that's what the Bible or what we call as an open vision. We see examples of that in scripture. For example, on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, Peter, James, and John, they saw Jesus transfigured and Moses and Elijah. So they actually saw in the spiritual realm, right? They saw what was happening in the spirit. That's an open vision. Your eyes are open to see. Uh, other things we see in scriptures, number four, you can travel in visions. That means as God is giving you this vision, whether it's a spiritual vision, or whether it's a, an open vision, you are moving into certain places. So somebody can go to people's homes. You see what's in their own, right? And, and you're saying, okay, this is in your house. This is in your house. So you're traveling in a vision, okay? You're here physically, but the vision is letting you go into places that you're not actually there at that moment. And last number five, you can actually be transported in spirit, which means your spirit is moving out within the natural realm or in the spiritual realm, and you're traveling in places, and God is showing things to you. Okay? So the five different kinds of visions, what I want to tell us is that spiritual vision is the most common which all of us, I believe, are experience in our lives. We're not paying attention to it. So I want to encourage you from today, Begin to pay attention to your dreams and your visions. You with me so far? Okay, it's not getting too heavy, right? Because these are things for you and me. And God wants to guide us through these things, right? So we might as well pay attention to it. Because we need guidance. And he speaks to us through dreams and through visions. Now let's talk about prophecy. Prophecy uh, is something uh, most of us would be familiar with. It is basically... Uh, people speaking uh, inspired utterance. That means Holy Spirit has given them a message and they are speaking it to you. Right? That's prophecy. God speaking to man through man. Right? Simple. Now, uh, there are, at the very basic level, prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3 says, it brings edification, exhortation, comfort to people. Right? You speak an inspired word, it can edify somebody, it can build somebody, it can encourage somebody. Right? But prophecy can also be used to bring correction and direction 
and revelation. We'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get further along in this, we need to stress this here, that we must test all prophecy. So let's read this out together. First Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21. Let's read it together. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. So don't reject prophecies. Be open to it. But test everything. So you must test. Somebody gives you prophecies, good, but you got to test it. Right? And hold on to what is good, which implies reject what is bad. I mean, there could be some bad things, right? Somebody says, you know, why should I test it if it's the Holy Spirit speaking? Because the Holy Spirit is perfect, the gift is perfect, but the vessel he's using is imperfect. So there's nothing wrong with the Holy Spirit. Nothing wrong with the gift. But the person is coming through is imperfect. So it, there is a possibility of contamination, meaning they will mix up their own words with God's words, with God's message, Right? So God gives the mutton, they put all the masala around it. <laughs> no, just joking. The God gives one message, they'll add two or three pieces to it and send it. So you've got to def- decide, okay, this is from God, this is not from God. Eh? So test everything, hold on to what is good, discard whatever is not from God. So you need to test the source of the inspiration. Is this person truly speaking from God? Or are they just speaking on the top of the head? Or is it sometimes even from a demonic source? Right? Got to test the inspiration. Then you also test the validity of the message. What have they conveyed? Uh, first of all, is it in line with the word of God? Does it glorify Jesus? Right? Uh, is the Holy Spirit bearing witness in my spirit to that message? Uh, is this uh, prophecy something that God has been already speaking to me over time? So you've got to test the validity of what is said. Don't just uh, let prophecy dictate your life, right? Very important. Don't live based only on prophecy. Don't go prophecy shopping. Yeah? You go to one person, you have any prophecy? No, okay. You have anyone? No. <laughs> Please don't go prophecy shopping. Let, let it come to you. Right? Let God knows where you are. He knows when you need to hear from him through the prophecy. So let it come to you. But don't go around shopping here and there. No. See, primary way, by his word, by his Holy Spirit, in a witness. Be led like that. Now, prophecy is a secondary way. Right? If it comes, it's good. But there are other ways also that God can guide you. So don't just focus on that. Don't go around shopping for it and getting, trying to forcing people to prophesy to you. Right? Uh, but understand this. The prophetic word can bring confirmation. Uh, it can bring direction. And it can bring revelation. So God can confirm something that is in your hearts. I remember in my own life, uh, like I shared last Sunday, from the age of 15, I knew God had called me uh, to serve him in, in, in Bangalore and serve him in India. Now, in 1990, I went to the U.S. I was studying there at the time. Uh, and uh, 1993, I was in Tulsa attending a, a, a weeks-long conference, a Christian conference. And uh, there was this person uh, who came to speak at the meeting. And uh, uh, we had just met over tea, during the tea break. So he just knew my name. He knew I was studying and what I was doing. So he just knew. Just, that's all he knew about me. But uh, as he was talking and uh, finished uh, during the end of his mess, then he came up to me, said, okay, you know, I just want to de- demonstrate the prophetic. And then he began to speak to me and reveal things in my life which he would have no idea about. Nothing. Right? And it came as a confirmation. It was, it was not news to me. But it came as a confirmation of things God was already speaking into my life over the years. So one of the things he said was, he said, uh, you're now in this country, but a time will come. God will take you back to your own nation and he will use you among your own people. Right? Now, that was not new to me. I already knew that for, for a long time. Right? But that came, the stranger came, he spoke. And then he spoke many other details of what God would do uh, in my life in the, in, the, in, the, in the years to come. And most of them have already been, have been fulfilled over the years. But, so that was prophetic word coming as a confirmation of what God was already speaking in my life. Okay? So next, prophecy can be used for direction. 
That means God can direct you in a certain way through a prophetic word. Uh, that you're beginning to move in a certain way and somebody comes and says, hey, that's the way to go. It encourages you and you begin to move in that direction. The prophetic word can come as, uh, to just guide you, direct you in the path God wants you to go. It can come as a revelation. So sometimes uh, they speak and say something well ahead of time. So I remember this was uh, 94, I think, but some, somebody came and he said at that time in 94, he said, you are going to be running uh, schools for prophetic ministry. And at that time, I had I never done that. So for me, like I said, no, not, you know, this guy's off. He missed it. You know, that was my reaction. He missed it. Nah, guys, I didn't take pay attention to it. But then here we are now, we are running weekend schools, uh, you know, training people, uh, to get on in the prophetic, and we've been doing this, you know, from 2008 or something. So, uh, you know, but what, what he said was way ahead of time. But even I couldn't agree with it at the time when he said it, right? Because it, was, I wasn't, it wasn't even in my thought process at that time, right? And here we see so many years later, we're actually doing that. So pro prophecy can come as a revelation, but God reveals to you in advance, but you hold on to it and God will journey, uh, take you on the journey into it. But don't go run off, you know, just jumping into it uh, outside of its time, right? Especially if it's something that's revelatory, meaning God revealing to you something ahead of time, which, uh, which, which you, you haven't been ready for it yet at that time, right? Just God will prepare you for it and take you into it. So uh, uh, just some aspects of the prophetic. There's, there's a lot more we can talk about it, uh, but just for us to understand, God does speak. But I want to make the statement that do not order your life by prophecy. Okay? Don't say, so you're packing your bags, you're saying, I'm going off to New Zealand. Why? Somebody prophesied I'm going to go to New Zealand. It's good somebody prophesied that you have to go to New Zealand, but has God spoken to you in the inner witness? Eh? Or is there a piece about it? Has God spoken to you personally? Don't base your life only on a single prophetic word or somebody prophesying to you. Don't do that. Right? Establish the primary witness, the word of God and the inner witness of the Holy. That must be first. Okay, if somebody gives you prophecy, good. But have there been other confirmations? Check that. Especially in major situations like this. Okay, you've got to check the prophecy, the prophetic word. Right? So don't run off on single prophecy. Now last minute, let me spend a few minutes on angels. Again, this may be something very new to some of us. Dreams and visions was a little stretch. Prophecy a little bit more. Now like this is far off. <laughs> angels. But I want us to understand we see angels in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. It's there. And we are in the church age. And angels were active during the church age, in the time of the church. So uh, don't, don't, we have to be open to the ministry of angels. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, talking about angels, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So talk about angels. The angels have been sent to serve, minister to those who are uh, heirs of salvation, to those who are saved. So angels have been dispatched to serve you. To serve you. They are act active. They are at work serving you. Angels do many things. They protect us from harm and danger. And many of us can recount stories. Man, I should have been dead. But something protected me. Must have been your angel. Or a couple of angels <laughs> doing their job, protecting our lives. No? So angels have been dispatched to protect us. But we also see in scripture that angels are used by God to send messages to us. And as you saw in the case of Joseph, they spoke to him in the night. That means they came to him in a dream. They intercepted his thinking with a message from God. So what I want us to become aware is that just as we said the Holy Spirit can speak to us, angels also speak to us and they intercept our thinking or our visualization, they intercept our imagination with messages from God. You don't have to see an angel to be ministered to by an angel. Are you understanding? You don't have to see an angel to receive a message from an angel. 
The angel of God comes and delivers that message to you. And you feel like, where did that message come from? Oh, it's an angel of God speaking to you, telling you to do something. In the, in the, in the, in the book of Acts, we see angels uh, very active. For instance, an angel uh, uh, directed Philip to go down to Gaza. An angel of the Lord said, Philip, go down to Gaza. And as Philip goes there, he finds his Ethiopian in a chariot. And the Holy Spirit says, go join the chariot, share the gospel with him. So the angel said, go down there. And just an instruction, one single instruction, go there. And he moved. Right? Uh, an, angel of God, uh, an angel appeared to Cornelius and said, you know, Cornelius sent for Peter from Joppa. And uh, he's going to tell you, the, he's going to bring the gospel to you. Uh, an angel appeared to Paul while he was on the ship to Rome. And the ship was about, uh, was going to be shipwrecked. But an angel appeared to Paul and said, Paul, I want to tell you that uh, although the ship is going to be wrecked, Every person's life will be saved and you will appear before Caesar. So the angel of God brought that message to him. So angels of God are at work in our lives. They speak to us, uh, they minister to us, and they can speak uh, and uh, we can hear them with the ears of our spirit. So when a message comes to you and, uh, and uh, you're not, you, know, you, you know that you were not thinking it, it could be the Holy Spirit speaking or an angel of God actually speaking into your spirit the message God sent to you. And usually you will feel the presence, a heavenly presence, not a demonic presence, a heavenly presence. I know there are angels around me here. Right? Now, if God opens our eyes to see them, that's wonderful. Right? But let's be open to them. It's just some warning here before we close. Uh, remember, we do not worship angels. Right? We do not worship angels. We're not worshiping them. We are not seeking for angelic visitation. Don't sit down and say, God, I'm going to fast and pray until Gabriel comes. <laughs> Please don't do that. Okay? We don't, we're not seeking uh, for angelic visitations. Uh, also, we must discern angelic visitations because even Satan, the Bible says, can appear as an angel of light. So discern that. But we can ask God for the assistance of angels. Nothing wrong in asking God. Say, God, let your angels watch over us. Let your angels watch over them as you're praying for people and, and release them and speak the word of God concerning angels. Say, God, your word says you will give angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. God, your word says that the angel of the Lord encamps around me and delivers me delivers me so you speak that and that invites angelic activity into your life so be open let us God invite that to work in your life in your situations uh, when you're praying for people you know sometimes you want to you know uh, uh, if there are people who are oppressing you send angels to them right? the people who are troubling you say God let your angels take care of them there's nothing wrong with praying like that because they're there to minister for you. Uh, you're an heir of salvation. So ask God for that. Right? So this morning, uh, we looked at three areas. Dreams and visions. Prophecies. And angels. So be open. I know this might be a little stretch for some of us. It's like, hmm, this is like, where? hey, listen, it's all from the Bible. Okay? It's in the word of God. And we have to open our lives. They said, we have to grow up. Right? To say, God, it's in the Bible. I want to experience these things. Right? I want to encourage you, uh, when God speaks to you through a dream or through a vision, uh, write it down. Journal it. Even if you don't understand it, write it down. The understanding will come later. God speaks to the prophecy, same thing. Write down those prophetic words that are significant in your life. Write it down. Don't forget those things because uh, sometimes they could be well ahead of their time. And even if you don't understand it now, maybe five years later, you will understand what was given to you. So journal those prophetic things. Now remember, and I, I just, just to illustrate this in, in, in a very simple way, uh, uh, how God just gives us a vision. I remember in, in, in 2014, um, Till 2014, some of you know and some of you may not, but till 2014, I was running the software business and pastoring the church, we're doing both together. Um, but in, in May of 2014, I had a heart attack and almost died. And, uh, sorry, in March, Amy is correcting me. Yeah, in March, uh, March 31st, 2014, so five years ago. And then I was in, in the hospital there, gone through that procedure and everything. I was lying in the uh, uh, CCU and I was praying. I said, God, 
why did this happen? What are you saying? You know, what, what, what should I do next? And in that, in that place, lying on that bed with all these, you know, all the instruments around, making their noises, and so will other people there in that situ. I was just asking God, God, what are you saying? And in a flash, I saw this thing go in front of me. And it was just this little, so this is what we will call as a spiritual vision. Right? Just in going. Uh, uh, in front of me, there's actually another person having all these things, uh, same machines all tied up to them, things beeping. But I was seeing, and I could see it uh, on my imagination, on, on my, the, the canvas of my imagination. I saw a man trying to straddle on two horses at the same time. Can you imagine that now? So that's what I saw. A man trying to ride on two horses at the same. So I got my answer. <laughs> God was saying, this is what you're trying to do. Right? So I knew what I had to do. Get on one horse. <laughs> Stay on one thing. Right? But that was, a, that was a, just a simple thing. And I was asking God for guidance. I said, God, what is happening? Why am I here? How, why? What should I do next? But this, this little vision was God's way of saying something to me. Right? Just a simple thing. But it, for, to me, it was sufficient. I knew what to do next. Right? So this is an example where a spiritual vision, a, a picture or an image that comes through your mind as you're praying, you're seeking God for guidance, seeking God for direction. He gives you something and you know what to do. It's guiding you. It's directing you. Right? So pay attention to the spiritual visions that come through uh, you, out of your spirit. They come onto your imagination. Pay attention to that. When you're praying about situations, you're praying, God, what do I do? Uh, how should I solve this? And I can give you so many examples of, uh, of solving problems. That the spiritual vision, God is in, the, in a vision. He reveals the answer. This is what you need to do. But you have to pay attention to it. That is God speaking to you. He's guiding you by his Holy Spirit. So this is for all of us. Dreams, visions, prophecies, angels. For all of us. Let's be open to that as we seek God's guidance in our lives. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. We will get ready to close. Just pray. I know it gets hot in here. I just want to take a few minutes to pray over us. and Just ask the Lord to open this realm to all of us some of us may have already have had wonderful experiences you may have had wonderful dreams and visions and uh, prophecies and all of that that's that's great but for some of us this may be something new i want to just pray that god will open this up for us and you be open you say okay god i'm going to pay attention to my dreams and the visions because you could be speaking things to me and I want to receive. I want to receive. Father, we thank you for your word. And thank you for the ways in which you speak to us, God. I just pray over every person here, God. You love each of us equally. We are all your sons and daughters. And your Holy Spirit is at work in each of our lives. So Holy Spirit, I ask, you'll open this realm for all of us. The realm of dreams and visions, of prophecies and angelic visitations. Open this realm for all of us, oh God. Oh God, we pray you'll make our spirit sensitive. That when you speak, we will know that you are speaking. What you're saying. How you're guiding us through dreams, through visions, through prophecies. Through angels, angel messengers. Open this up for us, Father. We ask that there will be more and more people having dreams from you visions from you. We pray that even as a church community, God, we will be able to share our dreams, our visions, that you will guide us, Lord, 
as a church as a body of believers people will come with a dream for the church will come with a vision for the church but the prophecy for the church we will know that god has spoken god let this increase amongst us let this increase because you are the god who speaks to us use any and every one of us we thank you lord and we bless you and we honor you jesus thank you before we close this morning i want to just give an invitation to anyone here who has never received jesus christ into your life the bible says as many as received him to them he gives the power to become the children of god so if you receive jesus into your life let him be your lord your savior he forgives you your sins and he makes you a child of god If there's anyone here this morning you've never done that in your life who want to give you an opportunity to do this I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer I invite you to pray this with me if you'd like to if you've never done this before to say this with me Lord Jesus I ask you to come into my life forgive my sins and make me a child of god and help me follow you and you alone the rest of my life and i pray this in jesus name amen anyone here you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time i just want you to raise your hand please so we can acknowledge it and recognize you acknowledge your presence anyone you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time just raise your hand right where you are so we could know that you did this this morning anybody pray this prayer with me first time okay i don't see any hand but if you did or is there a hand okay there's somebody here god bless you thank you god bless you god bless you anybody else who prayed this prayer with me this morning very first time we want to make sure you get this bag so we have this bag right here it's our believe new believers bag and uh, there are resources in there that will help you grow in your faith in Jesus Christ so if you pray this prayer on your way out there'll be our greeters with this bag just tell them i pray this prayer they'll give it to you there's a card that says a decision card please write your name and number and somebody from the church will call you and help you how to use this these resources in this bag we're going to pray and close and right after this we go into our um, VIP banquet so those of you who who been here, you know who have been here with us for last recent months please stay back we'd like to spend some time with you uh, and just uh, share some things about the church so let's close in prayer lord we thank you we praise you we honor you for your goodness in our lives the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit be with each of us always in jesus name amen god bless you open up your life to dreams and visions that come from god we trust that this message was a blessing to you we would love to hear from you you can email us at contact@apcwo.org also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources Thank you for listening and God bless you.